Hey everyone, Dominic Lehnert here, the Cashflow Coder. And today we are going to have a look at different automation solutions for you if you have a small business, if you have a few manual tasks you have to do. So right now, if you're in the situation, I know I have been there, you do a lot of, you find yourself at the end of the day a bit frustrated because you're doing a lot of manual tasks. You're having, for example, you're, you're, you're setting up a webinar and then you have people sign up to the webinar. So then you send them an email once they've signed up or you send them follow-up emails afterwards. You have to go through the list. Okay, who actually showed up? Then you want to send one email to the people that showed up. You want to send another their email to the people that didn't show up and these sort of automatic tasks that you have to do that take a lot of time that are frustrating they're not fun mm -hmm. at all to do and also they they can create a lot of mistakes for you there's a lot of solutions out there um, that help you automate these tasks and today we're going to have a look at three of these solutions first one is zapier second one is integromat and then also the third one is tray.io and um, if you just if you're just interested in which one is the best solution for you um, i'm going to start with that right away so um as we can see here so this is this is the summary uh, right away in the in the beginning so in my opinion um, so the, the, probably the one you've heard most of so far is Zapier. And in my opinion, this is, this is kind of the order of how easy it is to use and learn them, but also how powerful they are. So for me, Zapier is the, easy, the easiest one to, to use to learn it. But you basically, you don't need any training, you can just go in there and you can build your first Zap or the first workflow and automate stuff. Second one is Integromat. This one is a bit more complicated to use. Um, I'm going to go into more detail on all of these in a bit, um, but the summary is Integromat, a bit more uh, more difficult to use. You have to get a bit more into it, but you can do a lot more stuff with it. It's more powerful. And then the next level of automation tool, I would say, is Tray.io. So this one is a lot more difficult to get into. You have to have some a bit of, of um, programming understanding understanding you don't have to be able to code but you have to be able to um, wrap your head around some of the concepts of programming and to use it but it's extremely powerful there's a lot of stuff that you can not do in integromat or in zapier and as well with integromat there's there's a few things you can't do in zapier so my recommendation for you is if you just have very simple straightforward workflows do it in zapier if you if you find you can't do it in zapier go to integromat and then if you once you reach the, the boundaries of integromat there, and there's a lot of stuff you can do in integromat then you can go into um trade.io and start working with that yeah so this is the summary. Let's get into the details. So if you want to compare these different ones, some things you want to think about is, first of all, if you look at it, all of them, all of them, uh, Zapier, Integromat, and Trade.io, if you go on the website, they're going to have this huge list of connectors they offer. So connectors meaning you can connect to Zoom meetings, you can connect to your Gmail, you can connect to Google Sheets, you can connect to Stripe to run payments, all these things. They have a huge list, but not, not all of them are con um, created equal. So you want to look at... Um, what, what functionality can you actually get out of the connector? Just because it's there doesn't mean you can do a lot of stuff with it. And for some of them, um, you can just retrieve information. For some of them, you can actually send information back and schedule meetings and stuff like that. So be mindful of that. Then also the setup time for the workflow. So this is kind of the order we just looked at. Um, it's going to be a lot easier to set up a new workflow in Zapier. That's, that can be a five-minute thing or three-minute thing compared to trade.io where it might take a lot more time, you might need someone else's help. So think about the setup time for the workflow when choosing which one you want. And then also the number of different users who are gonna work on the workflow itself. So when you have a zap, it's not as easy to collaborate with other people and have other people change your zaps compared to trade.io, which is more of a, um, an enterprise solution almost, um, where it's easier to collaborate with other people and share your workflows with other people. Also with Integromat, you, you can build uh, workflows, you can build automations for other people uh, that are, don't necessarily have to be in your organization. So now we're gonna go in detail on each one of these. I'm gonna uh, touch on a few points for each of them. So you get an idea of what, for which scenario do you wanna use which tool? And where are the limitations of the tools and kind of when should you switch between tools so first one is going to be zapier so this is a picture of what it looks like if you create a workflow in zapier and it is straight up 
down vertical alignment. So you have kind of one line, one, one workflow going through here. And in this case, you get some contact information on your website, then you want to do something with it. For example, you put the, in this case, you put the information into your CRM. So no one has to copy that manually. Um, then you check, is it a new um, client? And then you might want to put it into a spreadsheet, a good spreadsheet with ha which has all your clients or something like that. Mm -hmm. So this is an easy example. And Zapier is, one nice thing about it is it has a free tier. So you can try it out for free. And the free tier, I would say, is big enough to actually get a feel for it, play around with it, and get some usage, usage out of it. And once you start uh, automating a lot of things, then you, you will have to get into the paid tiers, but they are also not expensive. And I think it is very good for inexperienced users. So all of these tools are technically no code platforms. So you don't have to write a single line of code, but uh, especially for Integromat and then for trade.io, it helps a lot if you have an understanding of the programming concepts, if you know what a loop is, if you know what an if clause is, that helps a lot with Zapier, that's not the case. If you have never seen a line of code, if you have never learned how to code or anything, it's you can go ahead with Zapier and just start right away. Another one is it is very simple and straightforward um, with the workflow design. So it's very easy. You just um, click, 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 add a plus. For example, here on the right side, if you want to add a step, just click plus and then you just go through and it's very linear workflows and it's very easy. Um, the, the thing is, the easiness comes with a drawback. So a linear, easy design means it's harder to create more complex workflows. And sometimes you need that. So for example, someone signs up on your website and then you want to do different actions based on different information that are stored somewhere else. So someone signs on, up on your website, you will have to look up, do you have um, information about them in three other places and then based on where which information is you want to do a different action you can see it, just me talking through the example how that is going to be difficult if you just have one block under the next how that is going to be difficult um, to depict in there and also with the connections with the connectors I found there's a lot of uh, single direction connectors so one example is Stripe if you've never worked with Stripe it's um, a platform to run credit card payments basically has a good API. And for example, with the Stripe connector, it is single direction, meaning you can get events from Stripe. So if someone in your Stripe account runs a payment or an event happens in your account, you can get the information that this happened, but in Zapier, you can't send the information back. So this is a big thing to, to look out for with each of the connectors on any platform. Can you just get information or can you actually send information back? So Zapier right now, as, as of the making of this video, you can not actually trigger a payment into Stripe. And this is something you wanna, wanna um, be careful with or you wanna have an eye on, let's say. And then some um, example use cases for Zapier would be if you, let's say you do a webinar, you, you host a Zoom webinar and then you have people sign up and when they sign up, you want them to get a specific email or after the webinar, you want to send to all the people that attended, you want to send out an email with some a free gimmick or something like that. That is something you can automate in Zapier quite easily. It's a very linear, straightforward process. You just take information out of Zoom and then do something with it, send out emails, blah, blah. Another thing is if you, this is the example here on the right side if you have customer signups, so someone signs up and then there's three steps that have to happen, always, always in this order and always with these information. Other, another step is you can have time triggered events in Zapier. That is a quite a nice feature. So you can actually have something like once a week, collect all the tweets that match this keyword on my Twitter account and reply to that. Or just once a week, look for all the the customer requests that came in and send me a summary, something like that. And also one thing you can do in Zapier quite easily is downtime alerts. So there's um, integrations in Zapier or, or Zap um, that you can use, which check, for example, if I go to this website, do I get an error code? So you can set this up to run consistently or constantly. And then once, um, for example, your website goes down, it would just send you an email. Hey, Dominic, the website just... Um, shut down. This is the error code. You might want to check that out. So that is a cool feature. And I think the target group for Zapier is non-programmers. You don't have to have any 
knowledge in coding. You don't have to really have any understanding of how coding uh, programming concepts work. And it is quite cheap and easy to start with this platform. So it's good for solopreneurs. If you do, if you just by yourself and you do a lot of tasks manually and you can't pay someone else to take off that, that work off your plate, um, use some some automation for that and also small to medium businesses as i said zapier has some limitations but for a lot of straightforward linear tasks it's quite good mm -hmm. let's take a look at the next one so the next one is integromat and as you can see right away this is a picture out of the um, integromat um, kind of workflow creator and as you can see so this one is left to right you start on the left side and then you do actions as you go to the right side and as you can see right away you can build a lot more complexity in this system. So as you see here, um, you start with one thing, then based on conditions, you can do different things afterwards. You can split it up again and again and again, which allows you to do a lot more stuff. Nice thing about Integromat is it has a free tea available. Um, so you can also try it out for free. And um, with the free tier, you can also, and it's not just playing around with it, but you can actually start a few um, workflows and actually do a few automations with it. So another thing with Integromat to keep in mind, as I said, the, the, the power of the tools get higher as I go through this, but also the time it takes to get used to that or, or wrap your head around it and start to learn and use it. So with Integromat, it takes a little bit longer. And I think with Integromat, it's not necessary to be, necessary but it definitely helps to have some sort of understanding of coding concepts to know what a regex is how error handling should look like why you do error handling um, and these kinds of things and big advantage is you can do more complex models in integromat you can branch out and you can do these kinds of things and also the, in my opinion what i found the connectors in integromat are a lot more powerful for example talking again about the stripe connector running payments in integromat you can't just get events from from stripe so you can't just get the information hey someone's credit card has just been run and based on that maybe uh, do a check mark somewhere in a google sheet but you can actually send data back. So with Integromat, you could actually trigger payments into Stripe if you wanted to. So if someone, um, for example, signed up or something happened in your CRM, you could actually then go and trigger Stripe payment um, along the workflow. And yeah, next one, uh, what are good use cases? So in my opinion, good use cases for Integromat is if you have a few more conditions along the way, if you want to do few, if you want to branch out along your workflow. So if it's not just step by step, one thing after the next, but you want to branch out and you have more conditions, if this is the case, then I want to do this. And if not, do that. And also, if you want to integra integrate, Integromat, integrate more data while you're doing the workflow. So if you have a trigger here, in, in this case, in the on the very left side of the picture, you can see it's a webhook. So you have a trigger and then you might you get some information with that. So someone, someone's payment just got run. And then you wanna get some information for that client out of one of your databases. Based on what you read out of this database, you might wanna get some more information out of a different database and then you combine that together and then send out an email. And along the way, you br wanna branch out more. This is a lot easier in Integromat to do. And also if you wanna update into databases, I find it a lot easier to do that in Integromat because you have more you have more vari variables available, and in Zapier, for example. So to make this clear, that if you just work with Google Sheets as your, your database, there's different different levels I would say to use it. So one easy thing to do also in Zapier is just add a row in your in your spreadsheet, basically in your database. That is quite easy to do because you don't have to interact with the other rows in the database. You just put in the next row. But if you want to apt, update a row in your database, you first have to find the correct row, you have to find the correct field, you have to make sure, do I want to update this value? Or maybe is it already correct, stuff like that. You have to use the other data in the same spreadsheet to calculate a new value maybe. And that is a lot easier to do in Integromat. So if you have more complex workflows, and as I said in the beginning, if you find yourself using Sapia and you can't do um, what you're trying to do, just go to the next step and try Integromat. That's my opinion. And the target group for this one, I would say, is slightly more tech savvy users. So you don't have to be able to code, as I said, 
but it helps if you have some understanding in mind. Maybe you've seen some code before, you've written some code before. So slightly more tax savvy and also small solopreneurs and small to medium businesses. And one nice thing with um, Integromat is you can also basically work as an automation specialist. So you can create, quite easily create um, automations for other people. So if you have someone who has a business and you want to have them in their business, but you're not situated in their business, you're not an employee of, of theirs, then you can use Integromat to build automations for them and you maintain the workflows you see here and you don't actually have to be situated in their business. That's, that's quite nice in my opinion um, with Integromat. And if you're, so just to, to um, compare Zapier and Integromat, if you just put it together next to each other, you can quite easily see the difference in complexity you can depict. So the, the big one here is um, Integromat. And this is an example of a very complex one, I would say. Um, but you can see how much complexity you can build into it and how many things you can do with it while at the same time, uh, or while on the other hand with Zapier down here, you can see it's it's just top to bottom and linear. So it's really hard to, to put conditions in there. It is possible to basically do branching, invisible branching, if you want to call it that, um, in Zapier as well. But it's then hard to to uh, maintain these these zaps because it's harder to read and harder to see in integromat you can nicely see okay i get this information in and then i split it up and one part goes this way one part goes this way and this is this is how the the um how my workflow works so that's zapier that's integromat let's look at the third one trade.io in my opinion the most powerful one but also the hardest one to learn and you have to have a bit more understanding of, of what you're actually doing um, in regards to programming. So as you can see here, this one is also top to bottom, but it allows you to do a lot more branching and it allows you to operate on a lower level in regards to the, the logic you implement. So this is, in my opinion, this is a, it's, it's still no code, but in my opinion, this is more of an actual programming slash development environment because you can actually do stuff you would do in code. So you can do loops, you can um, do clauses, if clauses, you can all cases, you can all do all these different kinds of things. And as you can see here, it's basically like a, a visual uh, code that you're writing and you can actually see, okay, where does the logic go? What does it do? So let's have a look at trade.io. So first of all, Trader.io is a, it's a different target group, I would say. So there's no free tier available. There is no free tier for Trader.io. There's only a paid tier available and you actually need to book a demo to get access to the paid tier. So I think there's maybe 14 days for free or something, but there's actually no way you can keep using it without paying. And I think the minimum tier is somewhere around 800 uh, bucks a month. And it takes more time to set it up and learn it. So you have to have more understanding. If you've written some code before, I would say this is still no problem. You just have to get used to the, to the layout of wh where are the buttons and stuff. Um, but it's, it shouldn't be a problem. If you've never written code, this is going to be a bit more challenging. Next one with this one is nice that I think, uh, I think w w one thing that is nice with trade.io is you can basically connect to any software on the internet, which has an API. So which has... Uh, the ability to automatically connect to it. Um, and they have pretty powerful connectors. So this is um, one thing I noticed with trade.io, they have put in the work to build the right, uh, to build really good connectors. So you can do a lot of stuff. And again, the connector being here with the example of Stripe, when you want to run payments in your Stripe um, account, there's a lot of actions you can do talking to your Stripe account. And there's a lot of very powerful multi-directional connectors that trade.io has. One big thing that the other ones don't offer at all, but maybe you might not need, but one thing that trade.io can do is it, you can embed it into your software. So let's say you're a startup, you have your own product. Um, basic example, you have a scheduling tool um, for, or you, you have a, an event organization, you have an event tool or something, people can host online events with your tool. And then you want to integrate it with Calendly or any um, calendar booking system in that in that way. And one way to do it is have your programmers actually integrate your software with the API of the, the system you're connecting to. 
but a, a, a different way would actually be to use trade.io and it, embed it into your system. So this, what this would look like is the, the steps you need to connect the two systems, you do that in trade.io. So you do this the way you see it here on the right side that you have this, these workflows and the things that happen. Um, and then what, what you will need if you connect the two systems, at some point you will need the, the, very, the, the login infos of the users. And with trade.io, you can actually embed that into your own product. So let's say the customer signs up into your product and then they say, okay, I wanna have the integration for this. I wanna be able to integrate your software with my calendar booking system. Then they just check that mark or, or press the button and then they go to a, the, the embedded part where they just ha then have to type in the, um, their login infos, for example, for their own booking system, and then it automatically connects. So you can embed trade.io with your own software. Bit, slightly different use cases to the other ones, but it's, I think it's really interesting to know that it can do that. And there's some really good use cases for this. So in general, what are the use cases for trade.io? In my opinion, it's for larger and more complex applications. And you can do a lot of stuff with it. I think you can do almost everything you can, if you, you could do in code, you can do in trade.io. Um, you can connect to basically any IP, API you want. So you can build really large and complex applications. You can build multi-directional workflows so you can and, and nicely loop through them. So um, if it's not just one way, so you start at the top and you go to the bottom um, and it's not just you take information, then you do this, 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 this with the information and then finish and maybe one at one point branch out and come back. But you can, you take the information, you read, let's say all the customers that fit a specific thing and then you can, for each customer, do this. So you start looping around all the customers and these kinds of things you can nicely do in trade.io. And in my opinion, the target group for trade.io would be tech savvy users. So you have to understand the basic concepts. You have to know what a loop is, how that works. Um, for programmers, if you want to quickly drag and drop something together. And I think this is one, this one is not so much interesting for you if you just trying to find a free automation tool. So this one is gonna cost you money. It's gonna cost you time to, um, to, to start using it, to implement it, but you can get a lot out of it, I think. So it's more interesting for small to large businesses or more corporations in, the, in that sense. Yeah, so this, and yeah, this is how you run the trade.io. Yeah, so this is it for today. Um, my name is Dominic Lehnert. I am the Cashflow Coder. I hope this helped some of you. Let me know what your favorite automation tools are in the comments. And also, if you disagree with anything I just said, let me know and we can talk about it. If you have automation needs, so if you just saw this and think, oh yeah, this is exactly what I need, but I don't want to deal with it. Like I, I don't want to go through the brain damage of learning these tools and finding out, okay, what are all the tools there are? Maybe you, you want to change your CRM system as well. And you don't want to go through the brain damage of that. Um, just hit me up. I will put the buy me a coffee link in the description. Hit me up, buy me a coffee. We can sit down for a meeting and we can just talk about what you need and how I might be able to help you or how I could just um, direct you to someone who is able to help you. Take care. My name is Dominic Lienert. Take care and goodbye. <laughs>